So now that we came up with our list of basic antiderivatives or indefinite integrals, let's get some practice using it. So let's start by finding the antiderivative of this beautiful function here. Just as it was with derivatives, it'll be a lot nicer if we rewrite some of these, in particular this one. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But first of all, this is saying the antiderivative of 7. That's saying find a function whose derivative is 7. So think to yourself, what function do you know whose derivative is 7? And notice that we're also using our rule about the sum rule, because we're going to take the antiderivatives of each one of these separately. That was our first property from before. So a function whose derivative is 7 is 7x. Now how about this negative 6? That's a constant multiple. So we can just pull it out front and ask ourselves, we now need a function whose derivative is x. So x is like saying x to the first power. So by our first big rule for powers from before, what are we supposed to do? That must have been x squared over 2. If we take the derivative of x squared over 2, the 2 comes down, cancels the 2 on the bottom, and we just get x, which is what we're supposed to get. We can use that same constant multiple rule for the 5, pull the 5 out front, and now we've got 1 over x. So do you know a function whose derivative is 1 over x? You sure do. Natural log of x, except, what did we talk about in the last segment? What do we have to put in here to avoid losing half a point, because we might be plugging negatives into something that we're not allowed to? We have to put those absolute value bars in there, right? As we discussed in the last segment. How about this? The minus 4 is a constant. And then we have to find an antiderivative of x cubed. So again, we use our power rule. That must have started off its life as x to the fourth over 4. Now what about this? This would look a lot nicer if we wrote, rewrote it as 2x to the 1 half power. So then that will become what? 2x to the, we want to add 1 to the exponent. We're always just doing the opposite of what we did with derivatives. 2x to the 3 halves and divide by 3 halves. And I hope some of you are screaming out at home, what about the, what are we forgetting here? The plus c, right? Because this is telling us when we write an indefinite integral, it's saying you're supposed to find all of the possible antiderivatives. And there are infinitely many, right? You, once you find one, you can shift it up or down by any real number. So of the infinitely many that are here, so far we've only found one. So basically 0%. Luckily, we don't grade the problems that way. But by putting just that plus c at the end, you get all of them. And that's the full set of antiderivatives. And as usual, we don't need to simplify, but we can simplify this. It'll look pre pretty nice. This will be 7x minus 3x squared plus 5 natural log of absolute value of x. Don't forget that. Minus x to the fourth. And then dividing by 3 halves is multiplying by 2 thirds. So that's a 4 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. And again, you don't need to simplify, but if you like to simplify, that would be a way to do it. And you can always check if you've got the right answer by taking the derivative. Take the derivative of this, you get negative 6x. Take the derivative of this, you get 2 square roots of x, just like you're supposed to. Here, what's the new thing here? We have two functions multiplied together, two functions of x. So we can't use any sort of thing to like pull this x out front, because this x is not a constant. It's only constants that we can pull out front. And we don't have a so-called backwards product rule yet. That's a Calculus 2 topic that you'll study next semester. But we can still do this problem by using a bit of algebra first and multiplying these terms out. So we'll get x times x squared, which is x cubed, and x times 1 is x. So now we know how to find the antiderivative of that x cubed becomes x to the fourth over 4. x squared becomes x squared, or sorry, x, shouldn't give it away, x becomes x squared over 2. And then again, let's not forget that plus c to get the entire infinite family of correct antiderivatives. All right, here, I hope you're thinking that we also need to do something similar because we don't have a backwards quotient rule. In fact, there is no really nice backwards quotient rule. Nobody uses it in the first place anyway. So anybody would always simplify this. So x squared over x is just x, and then plus 1 over x. So we turn this one from a product into a sum. We turn this one from a quotient into a sum just by using our algebra rules from the first night. 
And now the integral of x is still x squared over 2. The integral of 1 over x, ln of x. Don't forget the what? Don't forget those absolute value bars. And then don't forget the plus c at the end. Let's try one more. So here there's really no, we've got a product of functions again, but there's really no way to do the sort of multiplying out that we did there because they're two different families of functions, a uh, linear function and then a cosine. But do you recognize where this function might have come from? What was this function before you took its derivative? You've got a cosine of something other than x. So you should be thinking what rule there? Chain rule, right? So what, what would have given you a cosine of x squared? You would have had to start with a sine of x squared. And so let's just take that as a guess. Sine of x squared. Let's check. If we use the chain rule to take the derivative sine of x squared, what do we get? The sine of something becomes cosine of something, the same something, right? Cosine of x squared. And then we take the derivative of that, and we get the 2x. So this is correct by the chain rule. Now in this case, it was a nice simple example that we were just able to do by guessing. And it won't always be that case, as easy as that. We'll talk about this general technique of doing the chain rule backwards uh, in the next video segment. But for now, we have a check your understanding for you to practice finding some uh, integrals like we've just done here.